So there's a lot more of you now because of a thing on Reddit. So welcome. I understand a lot of you are probably not going to watch a whole lot of the videos, but hey, any support I can get, I appreciate. And I'm just going to kind of jump into my next character examination, which is going to be Delinar from the Stormlight Archive, Delinar Colin. But a quick reminder, my next video will be the official Q&A that I do. I'll either be putting out tomorrow or the day after. Uh, just shoot any comments or questions you have for me down below. I'm up to about six or seven I want to answer so far, and I'm hoping to get to that about 10, 15. So anything you want to know about me or my channel or my process, go ahead and shoot it down there. But let's jump in to Delinar Colin. Now the reason I chose Dalinar for my second character examination is that I find him to be pretty much the exact opposite of the development we have for my first Randall Thor. Whereas Rand, it was a question of how will this kid become what he needs to become, where Delinar is the question of how did we get to this point from what we know we had before. So it's kind of the opposite, and I love that this is his arc. I find it fascinating that Brandon Sanderson developed a character like this. And just to quickly clarify, this does not mean that Delinar does not change at all throughout the books. He certainly becomes more confident, but he definitely does not develop entirely as a character. He is who he is, it's just slight changes to who that person is. Now within the first two books of the Stormlight Archive, we get constant talking about who Delinar was and the monster that he was in war, someone who enjoyed killing and combat and sought out death as kind of a thrill. He is just nonstop just considered to be the dog of war, someone they had to keep on a leash to prevent from just massacring entire towns, which is very intense. And when you first meet Delinar, you're kind of wondering, okay, when's this going to show its face? But it quickly becomes apparent it never will. He's not that man anymore. Uh, he's definitely completely different than who people say he is. So it kind of gives you a mystery of the character of what happened. Because the man we see is jaded, he seems to have a very strong work ethic to really care about the people who work for him and does not enjoy violence or the glory of war at all. In fact, will go out of his way to avoid that glory, which is a huge contrast and almost kind of a bold difference to have from a character was to who he is. How can you make that transition believable? Which is why I was nervous when I first heard Brandon Sanderson was going to flush out Delinar in the third book. I was thinking, how is he going to make this transition a believable transition. And I think he did a great job. It's just, to me, was an ambitious undertaking. But to understand how Delinar got to where he is, we need to look at him almost in a chronological order. So we're going to go back to young Delinar. And in these flashbacks, we quickly learn that young Delinar is exactly who people said he was. He is a butcher. He slaughtered people left and right, actively sought out violence, disregarded his wife's needs, and focused entirely pretty much on what he wanted. He would have kind of tinges of guilt, but it never really persuaded him, and he would actively seek out to fulfill his bloodlust, and it really was an internal bloodlust. You can even go as far as to say that Delinar had no real value for human life. And we learn that he was under the influence of this godly entity making it worse, but it still was a very real part of who he is. And his real development is acknowledging that yes, this thing amplified him, but he still really was this butcher. And what really cements this level of violence is seeing how Delinar behaves once the wars are over. He hates it. This peacetime to him is just the most boring, awful thing. He wants to be back off the leash in the field and actively seeks out any form of duty where he can just go and continue killing and he finds it to his wife's horror who desperately wants him to try to just be a good father and not go seek out war. But Delinar does, he ignores his wife's desires and he goes back out into the battlefield. And something that's really hammered home in these earlier versions of Delinar is how bad of a father he was. Not just husband did, a terrible father. He neglected his kids, uh, the younger one he kind of just dismissed entirely, and Adolin he only really viewed as a potential soldier and nothing really more, which really makes you wonder how Adolin is not more screwed up than he is, or even the younger brother even more. They both turned out remarkably well for having a father who viewed them as either nothing or a tool. Now, as we know, because he sought out this war, some things happened and his wife ends up dying indirectly as a result, or maybe even directly, depending on how you look at it, as a result of his actions. And this is when we see the first real change in Delinar. He actually feels remorse and guilt for the first time that we can see. This is where I kind of in my head transitioned it from young Delinar to a broken 
Delinar. He is absolutely using alcohol to cope with PTSD, which he is absolutely suffering from. There is deliberate time taken in the third book to make it clear Delinar is suffering from PTSD. Uh, the alcohol abuse to compensate is also a very common thing that is associated with this, you know, horrific thing people go through. And he's really not only haunted by his dead wife, but the actions he took when he was younger. Now he's finally feeling remorse for being the butcher that he was, and it's starting to weigh down on him. And I can just imagine in my head the fast aging and horrific haunting that this would have on him, going from this bloodthirsty young man who just is, I don't care, to just having this one instant that makes you realize what you've been doing, who you are, and the pain that you've been inflicting on everyone is, to me, uh, one of the best fast character transitions I've ever seen for a character. Usually it's hard to pull that off, but Brandon Sanderson really made it believable with having the purging of that city be something that makes Delinar just stop and turn around and realize who he was and who he has become. Uh, one positive change we see during this kind of broken Delinar phase is he attempts to be a better father. That, that desire is in him. It's a seed, but it is there, but he still fails because he is so dependent on the bottle and he is still so self-hating at this point that he really still can't even manage to be a good father. And then the memories of his wife are erased and we are left with the current version of Delinar. And knowing how he got from where he was to where he is, makes the current version of Delinar an entirely different character. In the first two books, he seems to just be a very respectable man who has a rough past, but is now just someone who values service, uh, the people beneath him, the people who work for him, and someone who has a strong moral code. But with context, you understand where all of that came from. Uh, he is super cautious about violence or making his men commit into battle. He is very afraid of the consequences of his actions, and he's terrified of maybe feeling that bloodlust again, so he doesn't want to put himself in those situations. Because he doesn't really have his wife's memory anymore, he's not filled with grief. He's more or less just filled with remorse. So those ghosts of the people he's killed are haunting him, but not necessarily his wife which kind of makes it strike a balance where he's not just broken, yet he's not that young, bloodlusted man. He's someone who's aware of what he was, he can still function, and he's very much so wanting to be someone just, someone better. And I think he's trying to be more like Kaladin, because he doesn't see Kaladin entirely clearly in my mind. He sees Kaladin in a much more positive light than maybe Kaladin deserves at this point. Uh, but he, I, in my mind, he very much so respects Cal and, and wants to embody that leadership, that inspiring attitude that Kaladin just bleeds off of him uh, throughout this series. And I think that's why we see Delinar take such a fast liking and respect to our main protagonist of this series so far. So what we really have as the current version of Delinar is someone who has been through a hell that they created themselves, now is very afraid of going back, and wants nothing more than to be righteous protect what he has left, his sons, and walk forward as a righteous leader who can lead this world into whatever comes next while staying away from that bloodlusted self-past that he had. And I think that's why we kind of see him hesitate to take some of the more drastic actions, uh, especially in the third book, is because he knows what's to come will be huge and bloody, and he still is kind of a little bit afraid of what is still inside him. Of course, with what happens and him confronting that at the end of the book, he becomes much more aware and in control, and that's actually why I might need to do a follow-up video of this, depending on how Delinar changes in the next few, which is something I'm very eager for. Delinar is easily, to me, the most interesting character of the Stormlight Archive. Uh, I think he's different than what we typically get with these characters. I think he is interesting in so many ways and provides uh, a, fe a fresh take on the veteran soldier for the fantasy genre because he's not just, oh, I, I did some things I regret. He is struggling in a lot of internal ways that are a lot deeper 
and suffering from mental you know repercussions like PTSD uh, that I find to be brave to put into a fantasy book like this. I actually think that Brandon Sanderson has taken deliberate action to make all of his main protagonists uh, have some sort of mental battle. Uh, I think uh, Kaladin battles depression fairly clearly. Uh, I think Shallan has severe anxiety problems that are obviously a result of her past, and Adolin might have some anger issues. I still have theories on that that I need to go a little more clearly into, but as obviously I'm hinting at here, uh, there will be character examinations for them as well. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. Again, thanks to all the new people who came over from my Reddit thing, uh, and I look forward to doing a lot more of these because I find them to be a lot of fun, and I'm getting a little burnt out reading, so having these kind of videos is a bit refreshing. And I look forward to doing another one. I hope you guys like and subscribe. Drop any comments and questions you have down below. I'll be answering them soon, and have a great day. Peace.